रिकॉर्डिंग ऑन कर दिया आपने हां रिकॉर्डिंग ऑन कर दिया ओके भरत तूने भी रिकॉर्डिंग ऑन कर दी है ना आप कर दी आप कर दी अच्छा Agaram I think sir is here yeah so so uh, so welcome dr pankaj sudar so uh, welcome sir sir are you able to hear me hi gorav hi good evening uh, good evening sir good evening very much hi good evening sir, sir. so will this kya kar raha hai pantin so i think we can start in 10 minutes i think we'll see how much participants are there Sir, did you share uh, uh, this link with your students? Oh yes, yes, I did. Uh, Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. There were, I think, uh, many uh, NITs and other places where professors were. Uh, they were Great. They looked at I. I teach this subject. So okay. I think NIT Trichy and uh, NIT Nagpur and. Uh, Great, sir. Today being Saturday, so. Uh, I yes, sir. for this okay sir so, so let's start by around 6 5 we can start सर पंकज सर हाय गौरव यस सर सर यू कैन आल्सो रिकॉर्ड दिस सेशन सर यू सर आई हैव मेड यू द को होस्ट सो यू कैन आल्सो रिकॉर्ड दिस सेशन ओके ओके थैंक यू सो यस्टरडे यस्टरडे सेशन वाज रिकॉर्डेड इट इज विद अस वी कैन अपलोड इट इन अ डे और टू एंड आई विल सेंड यू द लिंक ओके आई थिंक इट कैन बी 
web cast it on youtube that's what i used to do yes yes sir it yes sir yes sir it can be done sir uh, yes we will be uploading the lectures that we recorded on youtube yes we have a uh, our youtube channel the post graduate academic council so okay. we will be uploading so we will be uploading that in, in a while in a two day or two and this one also uh dr pankaj uh, sir um yes 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 i can hear uh, you yeah. sir is it fine with you if we allow participants to ask doubt in between your lectures actually uh, i love that that is the general practice i i request i have every host to i believe in fact uh, what i request everybody uh, you know wherever i give talks to allow the participants to directly speak in their voice that's that's very pleasant to if i hear the voice actually okay. in between the uh, in between the talk because okay. uh, because interest is lost when the uh, you know the, the because the, when the slide is there if the question is asked at that same time so there is a different fun and and it's become it become more inter it takes more time actually sir. and my lectures are honestly uh, not time bound my purpose is to Uh, uh you know convey the message rather than you know fixing the watch and looking at the watch and finishing in the right time i mean it doesn't make any sense so please feel free it is actually i left it i leave it to organizer sometime organizers are too time uh, uh, you know conscious uh, in fact when i teach i am not i start at right time but uh, i i not necessarily it depends upon students i don't necessarily finish uh, within the uh, right time because i don't leave the students unanswered yeah so that's the effort okay okay sir we will allow them this time um yeah. so that they can unmute themselves and ask in between okay. and i have seen yes, that uh, students have been highly disciplined in all my lectures that once you tell them to mute and unmute and ask the questions and immediately mute they do that very nicely actually i never yeah. had any problem with yeah, yeah yeah and slowly everyone has become used to this online uh, oh, mode so of true. delivery so That's you can see true. that people have already uh, the discipline. They have muted themselves, and most of them, they, by mistake, sometimes it happens that uh, there are mics which are left open. But it's it's a very rare uh, thing, actually. So, yeah, as you rightly said, that uh, uh, the speaker as well as the the participant, they are all getting used to it, yes. and uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe this is the new normal. <laughs> yeah so you are in which department i would like to know uh, something about you the uh, before we start uh, you know my lecture just tell about you, i mean uh, which department you are in and which course you are taking you guys are taking and okay um sir i am akshay um, and uh, i am from triple uh, m department based primarily mechanical um okay. so uh, um basically my uh, domain of uh, um expertise in which i want to be an expert is computational mechanics okay okay and uh, gorav you can introduce yourself okay okay so so sir this is gorav varma so sir i am a masters student of materials science department so uh, currently i am working currently i am working on density function theory and okay i am exploring this area so 
So it is just the work is going on, and this is my project work that I'll be working on. So density function theories and using VASP and quantum espresso. So modeling and uh, some simulations. Basically, this is my work area that I am working on. So you know my colleague, former colleague, uh, Dr. Saurabh Pal, who was there at IIT. Now he is a director, IIT Kolkata director. He was an expert of this. Uh, this everything you are watching and everything. He was a he's an Indian. Saurabh Pal, sir. Saurabh Pal. Yes, yes. Saurabh Pal. Oh. Okay. okay. Nice to hear, sir. Nice to hear that. This is my colleague at IIT. Director, and, uh, now he's Iser Kolkata director. Oh, now, nice, nice. So, okay, sir, if uh, if I get any any problem in my project, I will contact him for yeah. your reference. He's an excellent teacher, and you can attend his talks also. He's quite yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. And maybe some more students can uh, uh, introduce themselves by the time other students join. we can pick up some students and ask them to okay so i will ask so any of you you want to introduce yourself your research domain you can frankly interact with dr bodha you are free to do so so any of you if you like to you can unmute yourself and directly interact with mr bodha or you may raise your hands we can ask you to unmute anyway it will work so guys so i think uh, there are now 36 people Uh, Ravi Thakur, can you unmute yourself and introduce yourself, Ravi Thakur? Hello. Yes, Ravi. Ah, uh, uh, hi everyone. Hello, sir. Uh, hello, good evening, sir. Myself, Ravi Thakur. I am from MTech Second Year Material Science Specialization, mm -hmm. and uh, I am currently pursuing my MTech project uh, under the guidance of uh, MGNV Prasad, sir. Okay. So, is there any uh, student uh, with particular interest in, uh, like, material science and electron microscopy in particular, experimental part, or not? I mean, you are because most of you are master students, so yet it is not that clear, right, at this stage. The research. Sir, actually, uh, sir, actually, everyone, I think everyone in our department has to access microscopy in some or other way. So, I okay. think this this domain is very common to all of us. So, whether we are doing simulations or computational works. at one point of time we need to do some experiments and at that time uh, this microscopy part become inevitable so i think everyone in fact not in, even not even in material science even in chemistry uh, electrical and mechanical biological sciences chemistry physics so in every domain i think this uh, topic is very important and uh, i know most of the people are working in this uh, are working in the area and they are they are using microscopy a lot so i think it will, it is a common domain for every one of us Okay. Then most of us also have a course on structural characterization, which is common to almost everyone at. Um, ha 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 ha! Yeah, yeah. I I teach this that particular course at NCL, yeah. which is quite popular uh, here at NCL. Hello, good evening, Professor uh, Arupesh Kedha from Nagpur. He has joined NIT Nagpur. Hello, good evening, Professor Arupesh. Yes. Good evening, sir. How are you, sir? Fine, fine, fine. Yeah. How's the weather there in Nagpur? Sir, it is raining. Continuously raining. Here also in Pune. Ah. Uh, this is really a bad, gloomy, gloomy weather. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you are in Pune only. Yes. Uh, I didn't move uh, an inch out of NCL colony. Most of the lockdown period and non-lockdown period. Uh, the essential su supplies are mostly delivered at home. Yes. Okay. How is situation with Corona? So, in fact, I used to almost every day look at my Google Map because I used to frequently travel. Uh, always, uh, two times, three times uh, uh, in a month, I used to be at the airport and uh, hopping cities. So, I really forgot that there is something called Google Map. I think almost all of us forgot that there is something called Google Map. That app actually, I I didn't uh, touch. So anyway, uh, Gorob, just uh, let me know when to start. Okay, uh, yeah, because we yes, sir. So we can start at six ten. So we can start at six ten. After just two minutes, we can start. I think it is uh, around forty people are there. So we can start at six ten. It is six eight. We'll be starting in one or two minutes. Uh, and uh, just a few uh, modalities this time. 
uh, guys let's make it an interactive session so if you have any doubt in between you can just raise your hand and uh, then unmute yourself and ask a question at that point of time and one more thing those of you who are from iid bombay kindly mention your name department and roll number in the chat box okay. thank you okay okay so okay so sir so let's start we can start now okay so let us start the uh, uh, you know place where we lacked uh, yesterday so today i am i'm planning to uh, give an overview of uh, uh, common techniques rather than uh, going too deep into the uh, because it will take lot of time and today is our last meeting uh, for this uh, session uh, uh okay so uh, you can see that uh, yesterday there were some questions so you can see that a typical electron microscope has uh, this illumination system uh, where you have an electron beam usually it is a tungsten filament or it is a, a lanthanum hexaborite a single crystal right so either uh, if you want to uh, take the electrons out so basically there are two conditions for the material which you choose for Uh, uh, uh you know electron source one is basically you should have lower work function and another thing is that that material should have uh, a higher uh, melting point refractory material so if you look at the uh, choice of material so tungsten and lab 6 uh, more or less uh, fulfill this condition and in addition uh, we know that in material science we are quite cautious about uh, uh, basically let uh, direction where Uh, electrons are exiting as you know that work function itself is uh, for an isotropic crystals it is quite dependent uh, on the on the direction uh, right so so those these uh, elect uh, these uh, uh, electron sources uh, you can uh, you have to give some energy right you can give energy uh, in form of uh, heating the uh, filament or you can uh, apply electron uh, uh, basically electric field so uh, so basically uh, the latter one is called field emission source which are uh, uh, much uh, intense and uh, much more monochromatic and they have longer life and they are much better so those are called field emission sources then then the former one uh, are called thermionic sources which are quite cheap but uh, they don't last uh, uh, longer and they are uh, their energy spread is quite uh, uh, a lot yesterday somebody also asked this question about aberration so now you know that the uh, this logic that uh, chromatic aberration will be more in um, uh, uh, thermionic emission uh, sources where you are pulling out the electrons uh, using uh, 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 heat so uh, so we still use the uh, uh, old fashioned equations to if you want to look at the current density you can easily calculate the current density that can be done and then electrons are uh, uh, basically they pass through uh, a, a, a cathode which basically what it does you, that is called venal cap so that is just next to the uh, tip where when the electrons uh, eject from here so what it does basically that it squeezes the uh, 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 you know this electrons which are coming like a shower just just imagine the shower in your bathroom so uh, electrons are like coming like like uh, like converging there so you need to diverge them and uh, so then uh, that uh, uh, negative uh, negatively charged electro uh, electrodes are put just next to the uh, uh, electron emitter and then come the uh, uh, positively charged uh, 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 electrode uh, where you apply whatever voltage you want 100 kv or 200 kv then after that it passes through a, a couple of uh, condenser lenses and then c1 c2 and then uh by uh, those are magnetic in nature so uh, those are actually uh, uh, copper coils wound on soft uh, magnetic core so essentially what you can do you can uh, ramp up the current and uh, you can change the uh, sorry change the uh, uh, direction uh, so electrons basically take helical paths so electrons do not uh, even though we uh, borrow we borrow these uh, uh, you know uh, schematics from geometrical optics because uh, uh, it 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 basically uh, serves a purpose to explain much better but please note that electrons do not take a straight path like this so because of the lorentz force i think you know the formula 
because of the Lorentz force, uh, electrons do take helical path. So electrons keep on like, you know, rotating like this. So then they uh, hit the uh, a sample, which is, uh, which is somewhere here. Uh, and before that, you can have uh, uh, different kinds of lenses. So the cost, as we discussed last uh, yesterday, that the cost of the macroscope and uh, aberration correction and everything depends upon what kind of lenses are there. So lenses are two things actually, lens and, uh, and, 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 and electron uh, emitter, uh, th those are the basically prime uh, uh, things to decide the uh, quality of the image. Other things are secondary. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you ask me to pick up uh, one among them, I would say that the lens uh, design is the most expensive and most crucial part in, in any electron microscope. Then uh, the sample is actually sandwiched between uh, top, uh, uh, object, objective lens. Basically, it's called con the condenser objective lens uh, 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 couplet. So, uh, so, <clears throat> so after that, you uh, can collect. So these, uh, there was another question yesterday that uh, how do you actually uh, image? How do you separate out of so many signals are coming? So you can see that there are so many detectors also. For example, you can see that it is written here VSE. So which, which means that you are detecting this detector will pick up the electrons uh, which are backscattered. So backscattered electrons are essentially uh, having same energy uh, as the prime. These are actually primary uh, electrons which have not lost any, any energy. Actually. So they just go very close to the nucleus and they just take a U-turn like a slingshot and uh, uh, then they actually carry a lot of information about the atomic number of the specimen. Okay, so this is basically for uh, excellent uh, information about the atomic, uh, uh, basically suppose you want to isolate uh, different elements, but you have a composite material, so you can easily do that. And you can do the imaging by, uh, you can do the scanning of this electron beam, so you can pick up the area where you want to inspect and then uh, BSE will pick up because detector will pick up the signals from that area. So now you can uh, you can do transmission and uh, so when you image uh, down there. So this is called the transmission mode. And if uh, okay, so if you are doing uh, uh, the mode, I mean now actually all both those techniques SEM and TM they are fused. So uh, another detector is you can see that uh, uh, you have this uh, uh, EDEX detector where you have uh, X rays uh, which are uh, uh, being picked up. And uh, you, here you have secondary electrons, uh, secondary electron uh, uh, detectors. So uh, these are uh, inelastic signals. So uh, as I mentioned yesterday that uh, in this interaction, a uh, lot of electrons, uh, which are part of the valence band conduction band, they are also knocked out and uh, they give excellent topographic information. This, this SED will have excellent topographical information, right? So, and this EDEX is basically energy dispersive X-ray. So this, this is also used for elemental analysis. So this technique and this technique both are used for elemental analysis. And uh, in uh, these days you can do uh, EDEX mapping down to the atomic level uh, with the aberration character. Uh, uh, so the resolution, lateral resolution, uh, spatial resolution has really improved a lot uh, uh, for these techniques. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned in, at the end of my talk that I gave a challenge that uh, uh, what is the dream uh, for uh, ultimate microscope. Uh, so people, I mean, as, uh, I mean, as a human mind, we are never satisfied. We are looking for uh, more and more. Uh, so that keeps on driving us to improve things wherever we find uh, problems. So now let us look, uh, let us uh, move a little bit further uh, downwards. So. And you can see that here we have a, a camera. So all the direct electrons uh, which are transmitted or uh, transmitted here, uh, which have not lost the energy, they are uh, sent to the, the camera. And uh, then you have a yields uh, spectrometer also. Yields is basically a spectrometer. So uh, as I mentioned that uh, uh, the, some of the electrons might have lose uh, some subtle energy and uh, those uh, are sent to the yields spectrometer. And uh, yields is a most uh, powerful technique, I would say, uh, one of the most powerful technique uh, because energy resolution is really high and it is also quite expensive. You know, it's like another microscope sitting here actually. So, uh, so now if you look at uh, this screen, so uh, this, this is schematic, what you see that you have the source, it's the most simplified thing. And then you have a sample. Uh, uh, so you, it's called, basically if you see, a, there is a column uh, hidden there. So it's called column approximation. 
for Gaurav, you might Gaurav might be interested. Some people who are doing theory uh, computational work. So for them, uh, I would have given a different uh, lecture, more with the more quantum mechanical, uh, more more oriented towards more quantum mechanics uh, and all the uh, you know uh, different kind of lecture. But uh, general public may not be interested in that much of uh, uh, you know theory. Uh, hardcore theory actually that's very interesting and quite difficult also but usually i avoid uh, giving it uh, to people so now these electrons can either uh, go straight or they can get diffracted right so uh, uh, see there is nothing called uh, undiffracted electron to be uh, if i refine my sentence if i don't use layman language i use both the kind of language layman and uh, you know more uh, you know depending upon the audience so i i try to be so basically, if you look at uh, more uh, refined language, so none of these electrons are undiffracted. So you can call it zero, zero diffracted. We call it direct beam. So direct beam is used for regular uh, 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 PM imaging. We call it bright field imaging. I'll show uh, images in a moment. And then the Bragg diffracted electrons are basically uh, diffracted from the different lattice planes. So they uh, carry the information about uh, uh, the crystallography of uh, uh, the sample. So they can be collected and the image can be formed. Uh, so, so there is a, you can see that there is an annular detector. So this is uh, again a, 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 a piece of semiconductor. And uh, so it's an annular detector because you know that uh, diffraction happens in a con conical, you know, around, uh, you know, back diffraction around theta. Uh, so, uh, so, so here I'm showing uh, another uh, uh, interesting technique. So, uh, in addition to this, uh, slightly at higher angle, there are there are other electrons which are again elastically elastically scattered electrons, uh, but they can't uh, they don't uh, they are also diffracted, but they do not have any they have lost coherency because they go much closer to the nucleus. Okay, so much if you, if the electrons go much closer to the nucleus, there are chances that they will lose energy or they will lose the coherency. So these electrons do not uh, lose coherency too. So you can put another detector, which is called Hadoff detector, which is again a very, very powerful, very popular te new technique. So this is called high angle annular dark field. The dark field, when you see dark field, basically you can see that the field is dark and uh, crystalline objects are uh, shown as lighting up like in the uh, night sky, some crystalline things, you know, starts twinkling. So stars are basically, you can say that crystalline objects so what you see on this on your screen here sorry this is hard off image so it shows basically more contrast uh, shows that uh, uh, high z uh, so you have high z element so wherever you see uh, more uh, electrons coming out that means they are uh, they have, they have seen uh, more uh, so you can basically assign you can understand that uh, so there is an atomic number contrast uh, in hard off and you can overlap this uh, with the edax mapping as i showed you that there is an edax detector so if you collect the x-ray signals for uh, corresponding to the core level core energy level of different elements so then you can uh, so basically it's a uh, cerium doped manganese oxide nanotube so naturally students would like to uh, uh, look at uh, cerium and uh, manganese and oxygen as i mentioned that don't try to even uh, you can look, you can you can color code uh, uh, oxygen, but uh, it's not a good idea to uh, uh, show the atomic percentage of uh, oxygen for variety of reasons. Uh, one being that uh, uh, there is a lot of environmental, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 oxygen which is normally it's taken out, it is degassed because there is a lot of uh, ultra high vacuum in the electron microscopy chamber. But it's still, uh, there is inaccuracy uh, in uh, oxygen determination, but you, uh, there is no problem in uh, showing uh, uh, the, the location uh, of uh, oxygen atom. So you can see easily that these are cerium atoms, these are manganese atoms, so, and these color codes are all false. Okay, so there is no <laughs> color in here. Uh, another example, now you can start seeing the uh, actual uh, 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 electron microscope images. So uh, on your screen now you see uh, two uh, images. Uh, on I would start from the uh, right hand side image, image which is uh, which is uh, actually a, a high resolution TEM image. Okay, uh, uh, bright field image. Okay? So this is a bright field image. You can see this the the field is bright. And uh, let me interpret this image for you. So. 
So bright part indicates that you have uh, more electrons hitting the screen. So bright part is basically, you can see that there is a screen here. So bright part indicates that more electrons are hitting the screen. I mean, that's why it is lighting up, right? I mean, uh, bright uh, means electron has been recorded there. Right? More brightness means electron has been recorded there. So, and dark means less electrons, right? So less electrons are reaching. So electrons will reach uh, in the less amount only when some sample is blocking. Sample can block by uh, many ways. Sample can uh, can uh, direct them uh, to different uh, uh, side, can diffract them to, to different different. Uh, there can be uh, back uh, you know back scattering and many ways of. Uh, uh, but believe me that uh, for a thin sample, uh, most of the electron will just uh, 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 shoot through, and uh, will uh, so that's why. Uh, you, if you take, uh, if you choose the elements uh, from, if you look at the periodic table and if you start uh, traveling uh, downwards in the periodic table, uh, so then uh, because you have more uh, uh, electrons, so uh, more Coulombian, Coulombic potential, so th there's a possibility that you will have a darker and darker uh, 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 material, uh, it will be shown for the same thickness. Obviously, if, you, if it is thicker, then you will have, um, uh, okay, so darker objects because electrons are not reaching to the same amount. So that makes clear. And another point I would like to highlight that this is an excellent example where you can see uh, organic and inorganic hybrid. So what you see, the core is uh, iron oxide. Okay, and uh, you see faint uh, shell, which is uh, oleic acid. Actually, this is uh, uh, organic. Uh, these are organic molecules. Uh, this, these are used for passivation and uh, avoiding the agglomeration. Essentially, it's like, so it is easy to pick up uh, 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 these kind of uh, organic molecules. Uh, I, I looked at uh, exactly the same picture probably, uh, uh, you know, 19, 20 years back when I was doing my first postdoc. That time in India, that, that kind of microscope didn't exist. It was hard to find, in fact, a regular TM, forget about HRTM. So uh, that was it was quite fun. So I was working on uh, some uh, memory devices, spin polarized uh, devices for hard disk, actually read ahead devices, uh, uh, more miniaturized. So there I was looking at uh, uh, you know spin dependent uh, tunneling of electrons through uh, some of these uh, uh, magnetic uh, particles, where you can polarize this electron and then. Uh, you, you can polarize the uh, spin polarized electrons and you can see that whether there is any change in the resistance when these electrons tunnel through a similar system. So it was similar system, so I made devices out of that. And there, a lot of electron microscopy was also involved in, in addition to the other techniques like atomic force microscopy. And uh, anyway, so here it is very easy to find actually that there is a, there is a gap here. And on, on your uh, Left hand side, what you see is the heart of image, the technique which I was showing you exactly the same thing. And here you look at the opposite thing that, uh, as I mentioned there, so this is basically dark field in, uh, information. This is a bright field information. Now you can see that uh, here the, uh, the where electrons uh, uh, are, are not reaching, it's opposite of this. Uh, you have the dark background and uh, where electrons are reaching. So that means those those are sharply diffracted diffracting bodies. Uh, those are sharp, sharply diffracting bodies. So that's why you see uh, a quite a, a, a nice image. And uh, another thing I would like to tell you that uh, I, I can teach with this uh, this this uh, same uh, uh, slide that uh, about there are two more things interesting in this. So uh, which you can immediately see. Uh, if you have any question, please uh, unmute yourself and immediately ask here because it's interesting slide. So <clears throat> another, fe another feature if you can notice that you see uh, uh, lattice fringes. So you see fringes. So fringes happen in physics wherever you have interference, right? Uh, uh, series of uh, bright, dark, bright, dark. It, it, it can happen at every uh, distances. You can see uh, 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 different kinds of uh, features, uh, uh, right? A lot, lot of uh, you know, uh, examples are there of the diffraction you can have uh, photonic super lattices, and in fact, uh, uh, all the grating and everything works uh, according to that. Uh, so coming back to this, so these are actually atomic rows. So how do you see uh, these atomic rows? So I would like to uh, uh, tell you that uh, uh, here, uh, uh, see if you, there are two options uh, that suppose you have this uh, 
uh, sample and uh, this electron beam is hitting the sample and uh, as I mentioned that electrons have uh, many choices. One of the choices is basically electrons can go straight and uh, they, are, they form bright field image, okay? And electrons can uh, go at the angle theta, which is your diffraction angle. And if you, if you uh, collect them in form image, uh, you will get a dark field image, right? So uh, if you allow both of them uh, through the aperture, right? So if you allow them to mix up, then what will happen that you will, there will be, obviously there will be some phase lag. And uh, uh, one thing I would like to mention that both are uh, correlated electrons, both are uh, spatially and temporally uh, coherent uh, electrons. So it's like, you know, soldier marching and all this. Then, uh, so that means uh, these electrons down the line, they will form uh, some kind of interference pattern, some kind of uh, fringes, right? If you allow them to mix up. And this, this fringes will not happen if you just take either this signal or that signal. So for example, if you zoom this image, you will never see this. You will never see the high resolution, okay? Please note that, that if you zoom this image, if you keep on zooming, zooming, you will never see atomic fringes, okay? You will see atomic fringes only when you have two beams uh, uh, merging. You can take any of these beams, uh, that diffracted beams, so that is that is the uh, secret of HRDM, actually high resolution DM, which is uh, which is the proper name is phase contrast electron microscopy. Uh, another question, interesting question, is that you can ask uh, uh, that uh, I wish you would have asked that uh, the atoms would look like uh, uh, dark or uh, bright objects. Uh, so answer is quite complex. Usually uh, that is uh, uh, I mean that requires uh, a dedicated one hour, one hour at least. Uh, for me, uh, so that I, I will just tell you that uh, it depends upon the phase phase change. Actually, I mean, so many of you are from computational background, so it depends upon the how phase change is negative or positive. So uh, how the intensity is being transferred. So uh, this the atom, uh, depending upon that, atom can be uh, bright or dark. That depends upon actually uh, the phase is change sign of the phase change, whether it is positive or negative. Right. So, because it's a please remember it's a phase, contrast of the phase. So, we are imaging indirectly phase actually. Okay. So, uh, usually uh, in the settings of uh, common microscopy settings, atoms are darker, dark uh, dots, not the bright dots. Okay. But you can uh, uh, change the uh, microscopy setting. Uh, when I teach that, I teach all those things that you can easily uh, make them look like uh, bright by changing some settings, uh, which, which we call defocus. Another thing, interesting thing I would like to mention here is that, uh, uh, yes. Excuse me, sir. Uh, so one doubt, sir. Yes, Ravi. Uh, sir, actually uh, one basic doubt, actually this is about STEM, uh, scanning tunneling electron microscopy. So, sir, I want to know why it is called, this is the basically combination of uh, scanning SEM and TEM. Okay. Yes. So uh, I, I want to know the why is it called tunneling? What is the reason behind the it's tunneling? Not, it's, not, it, it's not called tunneling. It's not tunneling. It's a transmission. It's not tunneling. Is different thing. Ravi, uh, okay. let me uh, see. T T doesn't stand here uh, uh, for uh, uh, tunneling. Uh, that is basically STM. Uh, let me. So that is basically uh, scanning tunneling microscopy. That is a different thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will. Uh, that I, I actually. I'm considered as an expert of that technique also, uh, uh, and uh, I teach that. Uh, anyway, so uh, let me share, uh, because Ravi has asked this question, so. Uh, I don't know how to, anyway. So I was trying to share the uh, whiteboard, uh, yeah. So uh, you can see a whiteboard here and uh, uh, scanning tunneling uh, STM uh, stand for, uh, basically it's to derive technique uh, AFM and STM. Uh, let me take a call, at this time nobody should call. Hello, yes. Uh, can I call you, I'm, I'm giving a lecture, can I call you back at one hour? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
So as in SGM, you have uh, a sharp metallic probe, uh, usually a typically sharp probe, and then you have uh, a, a conducting uh, uh, surface, and then basically you you basically scan it, and then you are uh, you are uh, you this distance is uh, a few angstrom. Okay, so you know that particle in a box problem that uh, if you, so there is an electron basically tunnel through this space. So uh, and so basically what you do is that you look at the uh, current, you measure the current. Uh, and you apply some voltage. So you look at the uh, uh, change in the uh, 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 the tunneling current here. So uh, if you are far away, suppose this uh, this surface is uh, 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 rough. So suppose you are on you are you are you are bumping on some uh, uh, valleys. So the current will decrease, uh, 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 Ravi, right? Because uh, this, this, uh, the distance distance will be yes, taken, sample is increasing. The tunneling current will exponentially decay, right, Ravi? Yes, so yes, if sir. you are sitting on a on a on a on a hill, uh, then obviously current will uh, uh, increase immediately. It will increase. So uh, this is the scanning tunneling microscopy. That's a very diff completely different technique, and you don't need actually. You can do it in ambient condition. I, I I'll go to my. Uh, so that's the advantage of. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, of uh, live questioning resolution power of both i think 0.1 nanometer as you discussed in the oh, first no, no, no 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 ravi it's very serious thing see resolution is very serious thing so uh, so resolution uh, uh, there is nothing called resolution power there is there is uh, we don't use it uh, like that. it's just a resolution resolution power resolution basically. okay Resolution of transmission electron microscope is decided by so many things. Actually, it's a very complex thing. Actually, uh, it will take me at least probably three four hours to teach you that. Uh, Mota Mota, I can tell you that it is decided by uh, a diffraction limited resolution and aberration limited resolution, which I mentioned last time. Diffraction limited resolution is basically uh, lambda by two, so it depends upon wavelength. If you just uh, go by uh, diffraction limited resolution, the li resolution of the microscope will be. Uh, because lambda is uh, in picometer, so essentially it should be very, very, very small. So you should be able to look at uh, probably, uh, I know, God knows what. Uh, but uh, it is limited by uh, aberration, uh, okay, uh, chromatic aberration, and uh, basically bad lenses makes the. So that's the reason that uh, till uh, probably uh, 90s, uh, atomic resolution was not reached. But STM, STM is STM resolution is uh, even if you take a blunt tip. <laughs> Believe me that you will reach uh, uh, a sub angstrom resolution by STM tip because STM tip the resolution is decided by uh, quantum physics actually. Uh, okay, it is basically because last tip will be you will always find that uh, in a blunt tip you will find that uh, there are protrusions which are atomically sharp. So <laughs> that's that's another topic. It it will require yes, some. Yes, so here, okay. if you talk about resolution, it it, it will, uh, it's interesting, but it will take me more time actually. Okay, okay because uh, Gaurav will not allow me to speak for more than one hour. <laughs> so, then, uh, then, sir, uh, sir, it is all, all, all up to you, sir. You can speak. Uh, no, no, it's all okay. uh, So, but uh, I am happy that Ravi asked this question. If you have any question, uh, please uh, unmute and mute yourself and ask questions. So. Uh, now you can see that uh, this is platinum uh, 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 manganese intermetallic nanoparticle, and you pick up particular zone axis one one zero zero axis, and then you can uh, look at. Uh, uh, you can see that there's, there is a color coding here, uh, manganese and platinum. So you, now, as I as I as I mentioned that you can these days. Uh, this is hard of stem image. Okay, uh, Ravi, uh, you just mentioned about stem. So this is. Uh, uh, you can see that this is hard off, high angular. Uh, so you, this is basically Z contrast. So you can nowadays this you can see uh, you can pick up. Uh, this is very important for catalysis science actually and uh, magnetic memory devices uh, to be able to uh, uh, look at uh, the position of uh, different uh, 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 atoms. So uh, so uh, so so okay. So let's see. Yeah. So what you can, what else you can do is, uh, let's clear it up. So what you can do here is that you can see that uh, you, if you have a, a matter, uh, you, you can see that this is a regular bright field image, and this is your EDAX image, energy dispersive uh, uh, X-ray uh, spectroscopy image. So uh, if you pick up any uh, point, you can see that you can pick up uh, all kinds of signals. These are uh, X-ray emissions. So uh, nickel L line, aluminum uh, K line, titanium, chromium, uh, iron. So 
so then you can uh, you can safely calculate the uh, 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 atomic percentage which is plotted here you can see that but you as i mentioned yesterday that you can see there is a uh, this this uh, uh, you know there is a huge error i think there is a lot of there was some discussion yesterday uh, that because x rays are not that sensitive so there is there is always an error but what people i would like to i give another uh, uh, you know series of lectures on measurement and analysis what the mostly indian researchers and uh, they do this mistake that they will try to uh, you know they will try to uh, put uh, they will plot it in origin and they will put their cursor and then cursor will tell them that 7.856 uh, percent and they will put it in the table in the paper that oh our origin is showing okay digitally you can show anything right but uh physically there is not there is that's an empty uh, resolution it's it doesn't mean anything right the x ray detector doesn't allow you technique doesn't allow you so you can't i mean if i if i put if i divide uh, uh, 10 by 3 uh, it's it's it based on my wisdom where i stop it otherwise computer can keep on counting 3.3333 so i have to i mean that's a major problem of digitization of the data because people lose connection with the Uh, actual uh, 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 information uh, in, uh, re resolution, what is what is possible, what is not possible. So you can see that uh, this is a typical uh, as uh, stamp detector. So you can put your TM grid as well uh, here, and then you can have in the transmission mode uh, electron uh, coming here, and then there are various other detectors. So you can see the TM grids looks like this. So you can load several detectors. Usually you can't do it in a standard TM machine. You can put only hardly one or two. Uh, TM grid, grids, but in the SEM, you, there is more space, so you can uh, have. Uh, 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 so as uh, Gorov requested me to put uh, teach a little bit about yields, so I can't go uh, in detail because it's a big subject. But I'll just give you some highlights. But what yields can do, actually, it's it's a it's a very very powerful technique, and I think it is there uh, with the with in uh, metallurgical engineering department department at IIT uh, B. With Professor Samadhan. Yes, yes, in the day Samadhan. Yeah, yeah, and Dr. Belare, I'm not sure. He has cryo TM. Jayesh Belare in chemical engineering. Yeah. Okay. So they are all my good friends. Uh, so uh, elemental identity, you obviously, it's it's a it's a it's a it's not very big. It's not a big deal. Uh, fine, you have already seen. What is big deal? Obviously, big, uh, you can uh, look at chemical bonding. It's a big deal because. Then you, that means your energy resolution is really powerful, and you can see that uh, you are demanding more and more. You can look at valence and conduction band electron electronic properties, which you can correlate obviously uh, with the DFT calculations. You can look at other uh, uh, environmental uh, 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 you know, abnormalities and other other conditions. So, uh, for example, this is atomic resolution uh, yields uh, uh, where you can see the uh, chemical composition. so these are different uh, uh, you can see multi layer structure which is usually this is strontium titanate and anthenium vanadate and uh, this multi layer structure uh, strontium titanate is usually used barium strontium titanate is usually used for your dram right random access memories which you use in uh, computers so uh, uh, you know when i used to do i used to work in this area uh, barium strontium titanate i'm not sure whether they have changed the material uh, these days so there uh, these kind of materials are multilayers are uh, probably uh, discussed and there are other applications also definitely there are uh, application that's why uh, so you can see there are more yields uh, images where you can look at uh, different kind of elemental mapping as i told you that this is still a, uh, not uh, not the not what uh, i mean it doesn't show the complete uh, power of uh, yields technique i mean i have, i have lot of slides uh, i hope that i have I, I have some slides where I show uh, how you can uh, I look at uh, different kinds of uh, burning of carbon. I mean, for example, uh, you would like to see whether carbon is sp2 or hybridized or sp3 hybridized. So that can really distinguish. For example, fullerene or 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 or, or you you have uh, basically uh, uh, single wall carbon nanotube or multi wall carbon nanotube. Uh, what is the difference between both? You have basically uh, uh, some kind of uh, wonderful interaction. So you you are you are changing the surrounding environment when you uh, start eat, uh, adding more layer on carbon nanotubes, or you have some kind of uh, imperfection, uh, some kind of like carbon dot or diamond-like carbon. There are different kind of materials. So 
uh, yields is very powerful that it can tell you different kinds of uh, carbon actually, which is not possible in any other uh, electron microscopy based techniques. So uh, that's very powerful. And uh, most of the time students, uh, uh, they normally don't use yields, but they, this is widely used technique and widely people get confused also here. Uh, so I thought that I will uh, mention it. I have already uh, uh, explained this. So you have basically parallel beam which are coming uh, and hitting the uh, sample. And uh, then you have uh, electrons which are uh, going uh, un undefracted or you can call it zero zero defracted where you, which you can uh, you can basically uh, uh, focus them uh, here. So that basically forms your uh, uh, this uh, central uh, spot where where, I, where where there is a cross here, and then you have, you can have different spots uh, here uh, which are uh, which are which corresponds to the electron which are getting diffracted at uh, different different uh, Bragg angle. Now just uh, uh, you know just imagine uh, I mean you know, you know the Bragg's Bragg's law uh, lambda is equal to two d sine theta. So uh, here, uh, this is a very good example uh, for the people who are working in metallurgical engineering among you. Uh, normally, I don't show the examples at, uh, related to metallurgical engineering at NCL, uh, but there are more examples for, so for example, uh, aircraft, aircraft uh, basically uh, 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 the, the metal which is used, mostly, uh, I mean, there are different kinds of material. There are old fashions where people used to use alloys and nowadays they, they use a lot of fibers and other other materials so anyway so there is a reason one of the reason for aircraft failure is uh, precipitation of uh, 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 different phases for example i mean if you are taking aluminium lithium copper this is not exactly the same may not be exactly the same same alloy but uh, this is typically uh, just a, a example that uh, you can see uh, these precipitates so, uh, uh, in addition to, to the base material, which uh, and you can see uh, phase separation here. So that's the reason that you see uh, two sets of uh, uh, diffraction patterns. So this is electron diffraction pattern. You can see uh, uh, there are there are like two in one actually. You can see the smaller dots. So and then you see uh, uh, okay the the larger uh, dots. So this is because of uh, uh, two phases actually. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, typically electron diffraction from a single crystal uh, looks uh, like this. And uh, this is basically too much of uh, electrons reaching to the detector. And uh, uh, this is called blooming effect or streak actually, where you saturate the uh, uh, CCD, you know, charge coupled device. So you know how the CCD work. I think many of you might be knowing. Uh, so. Uh, by going, if you know the science of CCD, then uh, you might have seen this this uh, uh, problem in your mobile phone camera, which is a, there also you have a CCD uh, detector most of the time. So uh, you can see that when you are uh, posing in front of uh, sunlight, you can see these kind of streaks, right? That is, you might have seen, but you don't uh, pay attention. And if you take a picture, then you those streaks uh, from sunlight, they appear on your images. Those are essentially coming because of the oversaturation of uh, 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 CCD where charges are not flown out actually, the overfilling of uh, electrons actually. So that those things should be avoided. And this is another uh, selected area electron diffraction. So you select the area and uh, obtain the electron diffraction. And if you take uh, a single crystal, this slide shows basically a difference between a uh, single crystal, crystalline sample and uh, you, if you have a polycrystalline, so you can have a ring pattern and if you have some kind of a texturing, so you can see that there is some distortion here, there is elongation here. Uh, so uh, as I promised yesterday that there is a big subject, uh, uh, part of my lecture series that the diffraction, uh, the difference between extra diffraction, neutron diffraction and electron. So one of the major diffraction, uh, 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 difference lies because of it is, uh, it's uh, uh, lambda. Uh, uh, lambda is equal to uh, 2D sine theta, right? So, uh, so now D is fixed, D is the property of, I'm sorry, I'm not getting my uh, uh, pen tablet, so I can't draw with precision. Uh, and I, this is not touch screen uh, one, so please, uh, my apologies. So, uh, so this is D, this is lambda. So here lambda is small, okay, for electrons, it's in picometer. So D is the same, D depends upon your sample, 
Okay. Now, if the lambda is small, your theta will be small, right? Obviously. So this. So for uh, electron microscopy, uh, the diffraction, all the diffraction happens uh, in uh, within one fraction of one degree. Please believe me. Okay. So this angle. So that's why you can see the column is very small. The sample space is very small. So diffraction angle is very very small here. But uh, in X-ray diffraction, you know that you have to rotate the goniometer from two theta is equal to 10 degree to uh, 80 degree. Then you get, uh, you keep on rotating, it takes a lot of time. And then you get uh, a lot of peaks. So please uh, uh, note that every peak, uh, every dot uh, corresponds to uh, a, a, a basically a peak uh, a, a here uh, uh, in the X-ray diffraction. You can see so many dots are here. So there are different reasons. Uh, another reasons uh, which are reserved for advanced uh, thing that. Uh, so here basically reciprocal. I think some of you are aware of reciprocal lattice. So reciprocal lattice points become elongated. Uh, uh, you know they they they. So we call it railroad. So that that's the reason that uh, this Bragg's law is not strictly followed in electron microscopy, unlike in uh, in X-ray diffraction. That's why you see more and more points. Another reason is uh, uh, about a world sphere. So a world sphere uh, uh, is basically uh, the radius of a world sphere is inversely proportional to one over lambda because lambda being so small, so a world sphere is very big. And that's another reason that you see so many points. I'll come to that if there is a time. Uh, otherwise, maybe some other time I'll discuss that. So um, let me raise this. So I'll show more images so that you will understand things much better. So, uh, so if you converse the beam the way you do in STEM, as in STM basically you are uh, converging. Oh, I'm sorry. So if you take a parallel beam, so that is called uh, selected area electron diffraction. But you, you can converse the beam uh, as Ravi was mentioning that uh, this that is called STEM where you can converse the beam. So when you start the converging, converging the beam, so that this uh, this this dot start becoming a disk actually. Okay, so that is another very uh, very standard technique. You can see that this is a conventional electron diffraction where you we have seen that we see the dots, and uh, each dot represent the family of planes here, and uh, the dot becomes a disk when you take uh, this kind of a convergent beam rather than parallel beam. Please remember that the electrons are not taking the path like this. They are taking helical path. Second, and second thing is that at one time, only one electron is hitting the sample. So there is something called single electron diffraction. You can read in Feynman's uh, uh, lecture series. Uh, and as I mentioned, so these are some of the convergent beam electron diffraction. And uh, these are actually Kikuchi lines, which are seen. And Kikuchi was a, a Japanese scientist and he, uh, so this is a very this is a very powerful technique for thick samples, and again it's a diffraction based technique. So Kikuchi lines, uh, uh, there's a deficient line, and uh, there is a uh, uh, okay. Uh, so uh, so as I mentioned that at, at any given time there is not more than one electron traveling down the microscope column, uh, and you can do a calculation uh, if you are smart in mathematics, so you will find it out. So uh, that was a mystery, and it was solved that single electron diffraction is possible. Interference of so it is seen actually. Uh, I will I will just skip it, but you can uh, go to the Hitachi website and they have excellent experiment which which was done in I think 1980s and they then they show that for example when you uh, uh, imagine a, a hole uh, in a cardboard and you are uh, size of for example let's say uh, your fist size hole if you make it in a cardboard and you are hitting a tennis ball. So tennis and uh, other side of the cardboard there is a, a pile of uh, 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 Sand. Uh, okay, so when you hit the tennis ball, and uh, you know you have a 50 tennis ball in, 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 with you, and then you start, uh, uh, you know, uh, targeting that uh, fist size hole in the cardboard, and so each time the the ball will land only at one place. So it will it will make one pile only, right? Because you are hitting. Uh, but just imagine if it is uh, an electron instead of a tennis ball, and if you do the same experiment. Where electron is instead of uh, that uh, uh, card hole in the cardboard, you have basically atomic lattice, and uh, you are basically look, uh, avoiding that Coulombian potential. 
So uh, you can see that uh, this is the experiment where eight electrons were showered. You can see that eight electrons are just landing just randomly here and there. And 270 electrons and 2,000 and finally 160,000 electrons. You can, you can start seeing there is already interference pattern. That proves that single electron uh, can diffract itself basically. It's a self diffraction. And the same phenomena is seen in photons and other, other, other particles actually. So this this is uh, a new, these are new generation of uh, TEMs which are aberration corrected as I mentioned and are, you can see the size of uh, uh, those uh, those uh, and some of these example of uh, uh, high resolution aberration corrected uh, imaging uh, is basically in front of the eyes. This is a graphene uh, uh, layer. You can see single layer and bi layer uh, quite uh, uh, prominently. And Carmen uh, should not show uh, uh, such a contrast, but here you can see that it's, it, it shows quite a lot of contrast because of uh, aberration uh, uh, is uh, minimized. Uh, it's a zero aberration and energy of incoming electron is highly monochromatic. Uh, so uh, two things, uh, if, if somebody improves, then uh, it's very uh, easy to uh, look at this kind of information. And second uh, prominent information you would like to see that, as I mentioned in my first slide yesterday, or first or second slide, that it is easy. You can you can uh, manipulate the material, so you can see that uh, the red dots basically shows uh, there are two uh, carbon atoms here, and uh, you know there's a hexagonal uh, 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 lattice, uh, as you uh, know in uh, single layer, uh, basically sp2 bonding. Uh, you have this. So here you have missing atoms. So now if you see that after some time, these atoms have been uh, removed and they land up here and they get they stitch and they complete this hexagon. So uh, you, you, we see it all the time actually that, uh, so that is basically materials modification is happening. It, it happens all the time, but uh, because electron energy is so much. So this is called beam damage, electron beam damage. It's another uh, big topic and beam damage can be a problem and uh, it can be nuisance and it can be a blessing and electron beam damage has been used uh, uh, in a silicon fab lab where you, you have all your devices. Uh, there is a technique, uh, uh, popular technique, which is called even lithography. Using that all your, uh, all your you know that uh, 8 nanometer, 10 nanometer, 14 nanometer chip. Uh, some of you can, uh, some of you might have heard you buy a laptops and mobile phone. Isn't it? When you look at the yes, CPU. Yeah. So uh, how do you reach to reach that kind of uh, uh, resolution? It cannot come from photolithography, right? There are your diffraction image is lambda by two. So this is exactly coming from electron microscopy based technology. They use electron microscope and uh, they use this uh, CAD software and they will draw uh, some pattern. I mean, I have done it, so uh, I have a lot of knowledge about that. So, uh, so you can, uh, that kind of resolution you can get only with this, this technique. I'm just in front of your eyes. So science is same. And so you can basically uh, write using electron beam with that precision. So basically you can take silicon wafer and you can take uh, different layers. So you can etch out uh, uh, diodes and transistors uh, of that uh, uh, resolution. So that's why they started with 40 nanometer, then 20 nanometer probably, then 14, I think now this, uh, uh, chip, AMD chip, you know, so there is a competition between uh, Intel and AMD. It's a friend, it's a healthy competition. Uh, so, so that uh, it lies, secret lies with this electron. That's another application actually, what you can do with the, another application is basically uh, the dual beam uh, scanning electron microscope. Where, so you can have gallium beam instead of electron beam and uh, you can chisel out uh, some, anything actually, you can, you can, you can easily do that. So uh, I'll do the fast forward, I'll skip it. And yeah, this, this I showed last yesterday, so I'll not show here. Uh, I would like to again repeat the difference between bright field, uh, selected area, electron diffraction, dark field, that if you can see that these gray uh, uh, electrons are uh, undiffracted electrons, so you can get bright field. And uh, these uh, uh, other colored, I don't know what color, uh, uh, light blue and uh, whatever you call it, like yellow, uh, so those are diffracted electrons and uh, they form uh, this electron diffraction. And if you use them for imaging, then you get the dark field images. So that's the science of that. And uh, yes. So uh, if, I mean, sir, I'll skip it. Sir, okay. so, yeah. sir, I have a doubt. Yes. Sir, uh, hello. 
So, yes, so my doubt is that, uh, sir, as we talked, as you talked about detectors in the beginning, so sir, uh, how does detector play a role in identifying, for example, if we have an element with a less atomic number and we have an element with high atomic number? So how does detector capacities to detect varies with the atomic number? Okay, good. Is it question. same for the all atomic number? Uh, uh, let me tell you. Good question. Let me. And now, sir, we are seeing nowadays that windowless detectors are coming. So what are the advantage of these windowless detectors? See, uh, let us let me tell you what what you are calling about windowless detector is uh, basically EDEX detector. Okay, so uh, so uh, you need window only in EDEX detector. Okay, let me explain. Okay, okay EDEX. Yeah. Okay. EDEX detectors are windowless detector. So they call it windowless detector, but they, <laughs> there is nothing. You can't have they. I see that's the selling this thing. There is a window. There is a thin polymer window actually. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This, see, there is a. These are all selling gimmicks, and it exists uh, uh, when you buy, uh, uh, you know, probably your T-shirt or you buy electron microscope. <laughs> uh, so there is a polymer window. They say that it is a windowless, but uh, okay. So that this is EDEX detector. Uh, so they are actually uh, yes. So uh, as you as you so uh, let us start. I mean, this ans this your answer is quite uh, uh, complex. Because then I have to. This answer is different for different kinds of detectors. So let me start uh, your answer with the EDEX detector. So now once the uh, uh, how it so then when X-rays hit uh, the silicon detector, so amount of energy uh, will decide how many electron hole pairs are generated. So basically, suppose uh, copper KL for lens in or uh, molybdenum uh, something uh, different different X-rays lens in. So they will generate uh, different populations of uh, of um, uh, in energies and now you can ask that suppose uh, 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 both of them lens uh, uh, simultaneously so what will happen so then there is a, there is a problem so that's why we, I, I always uh, uh, say that there is a there is a that's the problem with the uh, with this x-ray spectroscopy so there is a convolution effect and merging the peak when they when they arrives at the same time uh, so there are ways to avoid it and now let let me answer this question by uh, answering uh, your question by it's okay so that uh, i think best example will be uh, back scatter detector yes so uh, back scatter detector uh, it's again based on silicon so uh, same logic applies that uh, electrons with the high energy suppose uh, electron is taking u turn and it is landing here somewhere so this will generate uh, uh, so uh, so uh, what exactly happens that suppose you have a, a high z element here and here you have a low z element so high z elements will uh, uh, will bend more electrons so now the flux will be more here okay suppose you have a high z low z element so this will send less electrons here got it and high z electrons will high, high z uh, element will send, will send more flux there Got it. So when you're okay. when you're scanning the beam, when you're scanning the beam over the surface, electron beam. So when you land up on the high z uh, uh, grain or atom, so then you will record it as a uh, uh, brighter spot because that will scatter more electrons. Fine. Okay. And uh, now okay. coming to your uh, other detector, bright field detector, which is somewhere here. So there actually uh, uh, you can see that. Uh, uh, so uh, this there actually z contrast is uh, not uh, there because the contrast depends upon thickness z and crystallinity both so it's a contribution of all three uh, so so then uh, you can see that because this is the transmission mode this is not the transmission mode this is the transmission mode so obviously uh, suppose you have thousand electrons uh, coming from here uh, over a period of time so then out of thousand suppose 90 lens in here so you can say that uh, this might have been more Z, heavy Z, because this has blocked more electrons, or they, these, uh, this, uh, this, this uh, sample might have uh, uh, diffracted uh, those electrons to some other side, or this may be more thicker uh, uh, area, right? So, so, okay, so that's how this information is uh, recorded. So, uh, yeah. so, 
sir so i will also request uh, if any of the students have any doubts in their minds they can ask to you directly by uh, unmuting themselves so sir, so guys if you have any doubts hello yes, sir yes please uh, yes sir uh, the, the the question which gorav just asked uh, which you explained the answer can you go to the slide which you explained can you just go to the slide yeah the slide is here actually you can see that no sir uh, di digital pen slide which you explained by digital pen digital pen इलेक्ट्रॉन डिटेक्टर on microgram oh, yes, yes 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 on microgram brighter high high atomic number will look brighter got it yeah more Next contrast second. those yeah. Yeah, yeah can we simply say like this oh yes yes definitely yes yes, yes. So, okay so that is easily uh, look so, brighter right? sir sir again my uh, one simple uh, practice uh, question from initial point of view initial point of view that Uh, so the same function SEM does. SEM uh, scanning electron microscope same. Uh, their back scattered electron also does. So this is uh, why this is is when this is used in the industry or in any chemical laboratory or in any anywhere in any lab. So what is the advantage of this over single using separately SEM or separately using TEM? See, uh, uh, good question. Uh, so only cost-related advantage. Only cost-related advantage, or something good, additional. Very good question. Very, very. I, I, I think this is a very mature question. Uh, see, uh, this question was asked to me by my student uh, in 2008, 2007. Uh, okay. So, uh, my own PhD student. So, let me tell you that. Uh, see, uh, see. Let us take two examples. I think I have uh, examples here. Let me see. Actually, that is that example is there in my slide. That's why you are fast. Example is basically uh, the difference between thin sample and bulk specimen. Okay. Let me let me let me. So, in, so in, uh, are you mute? Kar do. Okay. So please. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, so basically in SEM Ravi, uh, you uh, usually use bulk sample. Mota, I know. Mota sample. I mean, you look at uh, a thick sample. Okay. For example, industrial. Suppose uh, some uh, civil engineer comes uh, with you with the concrete block. In fact, they come to my lab, or a mechanical engineer uh, can come with some automobile part or a part of a, a, a pipeline where he would like to inspect whether there is any precipitation. Or a aircraft engineer may come with some part of the alloy which is being used. Uh, I, I mean, so all kinds of samples lands up into my laboratory. Or uh, so okay. So there, the sample thickness is in, uh, for electrons. Actually, it's like infinitely thick. You know, uh, it's quite thick. So we can consider it's infinitely thick. So if you put the uh, backscatter detector there, because so this so you will get lots of uh, 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 backscattered electrons because sample is infinitely thick. So chances that uh, so mostly and SEM is much cheaper. So it doesn't make any sense that you use a TEM transmission mode. and transmission mode basically you are interested in this transmitted electrons you are not interested so no normally people don't put backscatter detector in in tem uh, they usually use because there are so many other detectors and there is not much space there to put another detector so people normally there is a space but they they normally put it in the drawer actually they don't put the detector because there is there is a there are other things important and in sem there is more space actually sem sample can be uh you can take entire uh, 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 uh you know uh, 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 basically a uh, uh, you know statue you can put entire statue uh, okay the terracotta statue of uh, this uh, chinese uh, those were uh, inspected for their material composition by putting the entire uh, uh, life size uh, statue in the sem but so that is the that's a, a simple answer so sem is much 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 cheaper you can buy sem probably for 1 crore Uh, easily or less than that so that's the answer actually got it so you get more signal yes, i think i think he has got it yes yeah so he has got it yeah so let us understand uh, 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 yeah this is a good concept 
so, <clears throat> so this is monte carlo simulation of electron scattering okay so this will be of interest to people who are doing some simulation job so suppose you have an incident beam and this is copper and this is uh, gold how much time i have uh... uh, so i think you can take 10 minutes more and then we can uh, uh, discuss some questions and then we can conclude it okay so i'll finish uh, before 10 minutes so you can see that uh, there is an example of copper and gold uh, and this is this also answers your question uh, in many ways so here the thickness is kept uniform so we are not changing uh, uh, many things so what you can see on your screen that uh, when the electrons start hitting this uh, uh, copper slab copper film or or a gold film uh, so there is definitely a lar larger uh, 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 atomic number here so you can see that electron path is there is more forward scattering here most of the electron get forward scattered so you can take uh, dark uh, bright field and dark field imaging here but you can see that uh, uh, there are uh, i think uh, this question uh, ravi thakur's question is answered here so you can see that back scattered electrons are uh, less here okay gorov's question is also answered here so these are actually your back scattered electrons these two electrons okay over a, over a uh, uh, period of time huh? so this simulation is done you can see that 1000 electrons 1000 electrons okay but you don't do it in, in principle you don't do uh, for 1000 electrons you are basically uh, over a period of time you are showering uh, probably millions or millions of electrons so basically this this signal strength become uh, quite uh, uh, significant but if you increase the z you can see that more electrons are getting back scattered so these are all your uh, z contrast imaging and these are basically hard up electrons hard up also you can see that uh, is used for z contrast so here also you can see at high angle uh, annular dark field there are more electrons so you can see there is a uh, z dependence on theta actually scattering cross section so scattering cross section is highly dependent upon uh, uh, you know uh, so uh, one thing another thing i would like to mention that uh, the target becomes uh, uh, smaller as the bullet becomes faster so uh, now question comes that what should be the energy uh, what is the role of electron energy so uh, uh, whether uh, it is better to use a larger energy or a smaller energy one one daily life example i mean you can do the thought experiment obviously you may not some of i mean you may not have you may not have seen uh, this bullet firing or you may not have experienced that yourself but uh, i mean it is easy to uh, do thought experiment that if you take uh, uh, a, a low energy uh, uh, you know a pistol or, or or a gun uh, and you if you if you i mean that's how the forensic analysis is done i think uh, uh, okay uh, if you uh, want to know which kind of uh, firearm was used so usually they look at the damage done to the body actually they look at the dummy they prepare the dummy and then they fire different guns so people can see so basically if you take uh, uh, for example ak47 uh, uh, which where the bullet is hired or machine gun or something or i mean i really don't know the names i'm just uh, uh, okay so then you will see that it it makes a clean cut okay it doesn't disperse in the body okay so if you take a very locally local made uh, gun so it will uh, the bot, the bullet is likely to uh, get uh, lose the, its energy uh, in the body so there will be a larger uh, you know energy loss will be there so another an example i would like to tell you that for example you are taking your you are going by your bike uh, from place a to b so basically you uh, you you go in a fast speed and you don't really interact you don't see the trees and green trees and people walking on the road and if you walk then you have more time to interact so basically what you what what i'm trying to tell you that interaction electron interaction with the matter increases when uh, uh, when it is uh, uh, when you have the energy which is lower in contrast to when you fire in it uh, so that's a, that's the reason that uh, it's not necessary that you get uh, more contrast for 300 electron volt uh, than the uh, uh, okay for uh, so the scattering cross section decreases as energy increases actually so uh, that's a, that's one thing you would like to know uh, so you can you can see this is the this is another simulation of 30 kv kv and 100 kv and uh, you can see that uh, here electrons just get lost here they will just uh, lose their energy but uh, here you can see that uh, some of the electrons here will be able to uh, penetrate through the sample uh, so uh 
So as I mentioned that, uh, I mean, this is a little bit advanced topic, uh, but uh, this uh, uh, make uh, sense. I can directly come to the conclusion. So y axis shows uh, mean free path, which is in lambda. So now this question comes that how thick my sample should be. Uh, uh, so people use all kinds of uh, spacing and people can use biological material or polymer material. So you can see that uh, the sample thickness should be the less than the mean free path and mean free path is a function of energy. So you, if you take a larger energy of the electron, if you are working on 200 kilo electron volt, so you can afford to take uh, 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 a thicker sample, I mean several hundred uh, uh, nanometer. But if you're taking a gold foil or copper foil, you can see that uh, the, it, those, uh, this foil will stop the electrons uh, for, for a very small thickness. So, uh, so thick, thinner the better, that's the, that's the motto. And uh, I think, uh, let me see if I can uh, quickly show something. Uh, uh, I will show one uh, last concept, so then I can stop. Uh, for the people, I think you know the reciprocal lattice uh, concept. So uh, here diffraction happens in the uh, reciprocal lattice. So that's how you relate. Actually, this is the real lattice and this is a reciprocal lattice. So you can see that. Uh, uh, so uh, 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 so you can see, sorry, this is the reciprocal lattice and this is a real, uh, real lattice. So you can see that these planes uh, uh, here in the real space uh, shows up as, as a dot in the reciprocal uh, space. And uh, you can see that these planes will show up as another dot and another dot, another dot. That's how diffraction pattern is, is formed. I will end it uh, with the with the little bit advanced topic. Uh, I think there is there is one last thing. So uh, so this is your award sphere, and this is the uh, reciprocal lattice. So and this is electron uh, source, and this is electron detector. You can see wherever the award sphere cuts this uh, these rep reciprocal uh, 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 points, then you get this diffraction. Okay. So you can see, and just uh, do a thought experiment that if, if this sphere is, uh, is, is smaller in one case and this one, uh, in one other case, this sphere is very large. So you can, you can immediately notice that smaller sphere, you have to rotate it all the way to get uh, some diffraction point because the probability of uh, these points touching the uh, edges, uh, the, 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 the perimeter of the sphere will be much smaller for a smaller sphere than the larger sphere. So that is the uh, that is essentially the difference between <clears throat> extra diffraction and uh, as I mentioned, electron diffraction. So both the techniques uh, you can see that short uh, uh, lambda will uh, will have less points. Uh, you can see here clearly uh, will 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 have less chances of diffraction in comparison to the uh, okay. So uh, I think okay I will finish it with a little bit more advanced thing because I am greedy a uh, little bit to teach you. A concept of railroad. So here, what happens that, uh, yeah. So here, basically, what happens that in 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 TM, we normally take a, a thinner sample, like a thin slab. So this dimension has to be smaller, as you already noted that it, it should be as thin as possible. So reciprocal lattice points uh, uh, are basically what we what we teach to in masters, uh, even in PhD. We always say that reciprocal lattice points are always like, you know, dot like, and this is all bakwas. This is not exactly like this. This is true because we usually consider matter as an infinite lattice, you know, interdimensional this lattice is infinite, but life is not uh, exactly the same, especially in the nano, nanoparticles. Nowadays, people work a lot with the finite dimension uh, systems. So when you work with the finite dimension systems, uh, suppose if, for example, if, you are, if this dimension is reduced, so this reciprocal lattice points are stretched in this direction. Okay. So now, if you are now, what what will happen that if you have this award sphere, this cutting this uh, 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 these reciprocal lattice points. So uh, uh, previously, probably this point would have diffracted, uh, but this point these points would not have diffracted. Now you can see that these break conditions relax. So all these points will diffract here. So that is that is that's why you have more. Uh, uh, more, more, and that's why you have so many points in one shot uh, when you take electron diffraction. With this, I would like to uh, uh, end uh, uh, with before uh, going to more complexities because uh, <laughs> this is going to be more complex. So that would be fine, sir. That would be really great. So whatever you have, you have taught us, we are really grateful to you, sir. So uh, finally, I would ask uh, any of you participants if you have any doubts, you can. Frankly, ask here and unmute yourself, and 
we'll ask her to answer them. So if we don't have any doubts, so we'll conclude in a few minutes. So guys, if you have any doubts, if you want to ask and discuss something with sir, you can do so. So, so I think, uh, uh, Ravi, do you want to ask anything or? No, no, uh, as of now, it's okay. <laughs> okay, Ravi. So, Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I yes, just brother. have one personal, uh, personal uh, doubt. Like, uh, how many uh, electron uh, scanning techniques are there in CSIR and gel laboratory? Like you explain so many techniques. <laughs> does it matter? It doesn't matter. Yeah, these days, these days actually every institute. Uh, uh, will have some technique. Those days are gone. When I did my PhD, that I used to hunt. Even now, the engineering colleges they have. In fact, uh, this Pune, uh, there is the College of Engineering Pune. They have got uh, uh, a very uh, very nice team. Iser has got many uh, machines. NCL has got uh, two three machines. It doesn't matter actually. Some of the machines are down. Some of the machines are up. All this information is available on our website actually. Yeah. Okay. Sir. Okay, no. no. Actually, I've seen only FSEM, so... No, no, no. We are oh. having kinds of uh, specialty. Yeah. Uh, we purchased uh, our first uh, T30, uh, uh, T20, T20, uh, this, uh, uh, in, I think, uh, 16, 17 years back, NCL got its high-resolution PEM first uh, uh, from FE, uh, FEI. Uh, now uh, uh, there is another machine that that is down. Uh, so we NCL actually uh, historically uh, was very strong in electron microscopy. In fact, NCL was one of the first uh, lab. I think uh, NCL got first electron microscope probably I think uh, at least I think 40 years back. 40 years back, and uh, yeah. So NCL material science was way ahead actually. I mean that time. I mean I, I was not there at that time. But uh, there were giants actually here in this field, actually. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, I have a few yes, questions. Yes. Can I? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, so, sir, sir, I want to know one thing. Uh, how do we decide size of eval sphere? Is it depending on the size of units in which we have chosen? No, so size of eval sphere is uh, depends upon uh, the wavelength of radiation. It's proportional to 1 over lambda. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Please don't hesitate in asking this uh, this question which uh, just now was asked. Yeah. Aditya, yes. Go ahead, Aditya. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, I had one doubt. Uh, previously, you have told uh, that on the basis of the contrast ratio, we are getting the information about the atomic number. Like, uh, if the intensities are low, very low, and very high, we can differentiate uh, which are the composition. In case, uh, like, uh, we are having comparable atomic number, the intensities will be comparable. So, can we differentiate in that case? Uh, very good question, actually. Uh, see, uh... Uh, I would like to tell you that uh, uh, I would like to tell you I would like to clarify that uh, uh, honestly uh, until recently only very recently when this STEM project STM you know aberration corrected uh, which which uh, reached resolution around 0.45 angstrom uh, it was not possible even to uh, forget about uh, 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 okay. So, so even if suppose you look at the uh, uh, you know 3D elements, uh, uh, for example, you want to differentiate between iron and uh, let's say uh, copper, it was not very easy to uh, distinguish between them using hard off which you are mentioning or uh, Rutherford or, 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 or backscattering uh, because of the bad lenses and the non monochromaticity of the source. But when these things have improved, so uh, now you can uh, resolve, you can uh, basically tell with confidence that uh, uh, at atomic resolution death in the lattice, this is iron atom and this is cobalt atom and this is, uh, uh, but it, it is not possible in any of the laboratories, I think, uh, in India. But it requires a lot of, lot of expertise, I would say. The machines may be there, you know, that it's, it's all combination of men and machine and software also. 
so i would say that uh, in principle it is possible the uh, there is no problem with electron microscopy uh, so neighboring atoms uh, have a problem same problem is there in the uh, uh, x ray diffraction x ray diffraction is also have uh, this problem because uh, uh, the atomic form factor is highly dependent upon z i think all of you know so problem lies with that so neutron uh, diffraction is much better because there actually neutron diffraction is used okay into diffraction is much better actually to answer your question ask uh, yes sir uh, so i had one more question uh, so previously you have told us that uh like basically the back scattering is happening due to the uh, large coulombic uh, you know forces and the if any presence of magnetic uh, you know, uh, fields in the sample is that correct <laughs> no uh see magnetic field uh, makes the uh, electron microscopy far more complicated let's not go into that uh, because uh, uh that is that is reserved for uh, lorange microscopy which is which is basically when you do when you remove the objective lens uh, so let us ignore the magnetic field uh, but you are right that it does play a role but uh, it introduces more complexity okay if you have a magnetic field uh, from the sample from the sample i am telling you from the sample magnetic from the sample okay uh, if your if sample is magnetic Uh, so, uh, so your question was: uh, Can you repeat your question? First part of your question. One was magnetic field. Yes. And, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I told that uh, basically the electrons are getting back scattered mainly due to the columbic forces. Oh, yeah, yeah. Atoms. So, okay. So, see, just uh, suppose you are sitting in a classroom, and uh, uh, we appoint. Uh, actually, I teach this thing uh, very nicely in a classroom. and i assign one uh, one student who is sitting in somewhere in the middle of a classroom on a chair as a as a nucleus and uh, all other elect all other students are uh, electrons now suppose you want to count uh, uh, how many students are sitting in the class uh, so uh, what is the what is the best choice for me i mean uh, if if there are 25 uh, students sitting so i would like to i would have to count each and every student uh, uh, and then only i will get the information there are 25 uh, students uh, so for example i am actually electron incoming electron so i have to go and touch each and each electron which is orbit orbiting in the uh, in the in their orbits it is impractical for me to get this information from electron electron scattering right about how many electrons are there got it so what is easiest for me what is easiest for me if i want to know how many uh, what is the z i will not, I, i will not rely on the electron electron scattering so i will what i will do i will go and touch the nu i will go close to the nucleus and from the nucleus uh, uh, this coulomb interaction uh, amount of coulomb interaction i am getting i will get to know how many students are sitting from because you have the z number of protons got it in one shot you you got my point Yes, sir. Scattering cannot give me uh, a total number of. Uh, I cannot count actually because I need to. Then electron has to go and touch each, 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 each electron. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. So that's the yes. reason that you have the uh, 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 contrast uh, uh, when electron goes close to the nucleus. So amount of uh, uh, this Coulombian interaction will be changing because of the uh, change. Number of protons will be uh, different, and that is the that is the smartest way of. Uh, एक झटके में मतलब उसको इन्फॉर्मेशन मिल जाएगी कि भाई कितना कितने 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 प्रोटॉन्स हैं उसमें ठीक है ना दैट्स व्हाई इलेक्ट्रॉन न्यूक्लियस इंटरेक्शन इज यूज्ड फॉर फॉर एलिमेंटल इंफॉर्मेशन अदर देन एक्सरे एक्सरेस व्हिच आर इमिटिंग फ्रॉम द कोर लेवल राइट राइट आई गॉट इट थैंक यू थैंक यू सर ओके सो सो डू वी हैव सम अदर डाउट्स ऑफ शैल वी कंक्लूड so i think uh, okay so i thought there is some so the chat chat box uh, let me see okay uh, chat box chat box is clear there is no question there yes sir it is people have entered roll numbers mm. the chat box is clear sir i think there is no such doubts it is in the chat uh, i want yes, to yes, ask something Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, sir, I just want one more clarification on the uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulation which you mentioned. 
for uh, electron scattering uh, 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 analysis. So how do I use my Monte Carlo simulation? I can, uh, if you type Monte Carlo simulation electron microscopy, actually uh, you can, uh, it will take you to that website where you can uh, 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 change the thickness and uh, decide from what is the energy of electrons uh, and then it will simulate and it will show you the results actually. Uh, uh, I mean, it's, I, I guess it is easy to see it is not, uh, it's not taking, uh, it's not uh, taking, uh, you know, those, uh, 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 I mean, subtle informations about the lattice. Uh, so uh, I guess it just takes care of, uh, 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 I'm not sure actually what is the logic which might they might have used because I didn't wrote the code. Some, I mean, somebody they wrote the code and it's available on the website. So I just, whenever I need that, I, uh, I'm i not a computational person. I mean, I used to do computational science when I, been, when I was doing my PhD. That was probably uh, 20 years back, but I've forgotten all that. So <laughs> I'm not the best person. Now yeah, I'm I just want to ask, uh, what is the purpose? For what purpose are you using uh, Monte Carlo simulation? It's simulation. Yeah. See, finally, so what, what, parameter, uh, what parameter are you computing from it? That is my question. Oh, for a parameter you are computing that uh, in uh, basically how many electrons are reaching. Uh, see, in Monte Carlo simulation, you look at the electron pathways, how, how the electrons are, uh, which direction they are getting scattered and how many electrons are reaching to the detector. How many electrons are getting transmitted actually. But it, how many electrons are getting okay. back scattered? And, okay. So, uh, if I understand it correctly, are you looking at population? Population exactly. or population yeah, density population of electrons? Yeah, population okay. density. It's scattering cross section. That is called, in, we call it a scattering cross section. Okay. Also, there is one more question. What is error bar of uh, STN, STEN EELS, which you use for characterization of uh, uh, Can you repeat your question? Uh, I just want to know error bar of STEM EELS, the technique which you explained. Yes, yeah, yeah, like, okay. Yeah. Uh, error, error bar, bar. let me say error bar, uh, we have to, uh, let me refine her question. She is asking that what is the energy, uh, uh, error bar in the energy calculation. Okay. Yes, uh, yes, yes. There are two resolution. One is the spatial resolution, that's how closely uh, it can look at, uh, you know, the, Spatial resolution. What is energy resolution? So energy resolution is around uh, best resolution is around 20, 30 milli electron volt in best means. And especially in spatial resolution, you have seen that it can go to the atomic level. You can look at the single atom. See, uh, if it is not, uh, if it is not in milli electron volt, uh, different kinds of uh, hybridization of carbon. Okay. okay. So, uh, so, answer is hidden in the fact that you, you are able to look at the uh, change in the uh, surrounding of the uh, of atom. Forget about uh, identifying atom itself, but if there is some change in the environmental condition, that can be detected. So, that means energy resolution is in milli electron volt. Otherwise, it cannot be. Yeah, it cannot, you know, okay, okay, yeah. Thank you so much. So, uh... So finally, now we have reached to the stage for concluding our event. So, uh, so I will I will be thanking here uh, Dr. Pankaj Podar. So I would like to extend my gratitude and thanks to Dr. Podar for taking out his time from busy schedule and explaining such complex topic with such an ease and explicit way. So Dr. Podar's passion towards teaching and his subject clarity is clearly reflected is, has clearly reflected the excellence which he is known for. So I again extend my thanks to you, sir, for spending this weekend evening with us. And I'm very sure that student community who have attended this talk and will be attending this talk's recording would be greatly benefited by the content that you have provided in these sessions. And we are looking forward to organize such more events in future with you and even at a very large scale. So uh, with these words, I would like to thank the audience as well and the postgraduate academic commu uh, community, the PGSE Council, uh, of IIT Bombay and my fellow co-hosts Ravi Thakur and Akshay Bharadwaj and for organizing this successful event of lecture series and which which, which would obviously would have not been materialized possi uh, possible without Dr. Podar such uh, such uh, help. So sir, finally sir, we extend our heartiest gratitude towards you for teaching us the electron microscopy in such uh, in solving a doubt in such explicit way. 
so sir thanks thanks to you thanks to you very much uh, on behalf of whole student community so sir so this is what i uh, like to conclude yeah, and uh, it's a, it was very pleasant uh, for a teacher it is a pleasure to teach uh, uh, as much as possible and thanks to this uh, uh, e learning uh, i am able to talk to you this evening and uh, so many people are listening and asking questions so yeah so i think this was a successful event of today so in future we would like to extend if uh, time permits and if your schedule your schedule per, uh, permits we will like to extend such more talks in future in a month or two and we would extend it to a series of lecture events we will and we can definitely uh, we have to look up the opportunities and and the schedule for this but as for now this event was successful and we are very happy to have organized it and thanks to you sir and thanks to all the participants who have participated and so here we will like to conclude the event and uh, thank you very much sir thank you, thank you. and we we'll, love uh, thank you sir so bye sir bye bye okay bye sir so i request the participants to please leave the meeting ravi thakur you can stay for a few minutes yes yeah. i'm here so participants you might you may now please leave and we are now sitting on left so i think some more are left अंकुश सुप्रतीम डी विनीत के के सिंह ओके सो सो आई थिंक रवि यस दिस इज गुड सो आई थिंक वी कैन कंक्लूड एंड वी कैन एंड द मीटिंग ओके सो आई विल स्टॉप माय रिकॉर्डिंग हियर ओके थैंक्स ओके थैंक्स टू द थैंक्स ओके ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू